Good evening and salutations, our soap opera fans. So, once again, I am joined by the lovely, the talented, the beautiful, the gorgeous, oh, wow. Danny Bear 87. <laughs> and, <Setting me> up. <laughs> that's true. and so we're going to sit there and start off with the question of should Sonny forgive Nina for that? Um, should Sonny forgive Nina for Carly and Drew's SEC scandal? And we'll sit yeah. there. That's, yeah. That's, I'm going to sit there and start with you. Yes, he should. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah, so he almost, um, Carly could have went to prison. So what? She didn't go to prison. <laughs> Drew went to prison. Who cares? And so they don't care about Drew. <laughs> also, you know, um, like I said, you know, I hope that Sonny has the same energy for Carly and Michael and, um, Dex and Ross too for knowing about um, Michael hiring Dex to try and send Sonny to prison. You know, I think that's what's going to help Nina's case a lot. <laughs> if she finds that out or um, when that comes out, you know, she's going to look a lot better than they do, in my opinion. So that's way worse. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I agree. That's more. That's way more of a betrayal than Nina. Yes, I've been, I've been saying that for a hot minute because I, I look at the situation, and first of all, listen. As much as I love Carly and I am a Carly fan, people didn't, people do always tend to overlook the fact that not only did she commit the crime, but she mm -hmm. set this whole thing in motion. And yeah. Drew is the last person to be smitten talking about, well, I missed time out with my daughter. I'm like, bro, you chose to sit there and go to jail for Carly. So exactly. you should be more you should be more upset. Yeah, you should be more upset with Carly than you should be with Nina. Like you're out of pocket. But I feel like the show has a I mean the show has a balancing problem. And it's always like Carly is usually the righteous one when it versus Nina. And I'm like, bro, sis, you kind of sent them to jail. So why aren't you spent there giving her that same energy? Exactly. I mentioned that. Um, I can't remember if it was my review or my highlight show. I was talking about it. You know, with any other couple I ship or characters alike, they're going to go after the person that set this all emotion in the first place. You know, like we see, we just saw with Anna and Valentine. you know, Anna's upset that she shot Charlotte, but she got on Valentine saying, Hey, you know, I would have never thought Charlotte if you didn't, you know, keep the fact that she was the one that broke into her room. Yeah, but <laughs> nobody's been mad at Carly for this at all. <laughs> That's the thing. Nobody's like, you know, Carly, you're the one that didn't listen in the first place. You should be mad at Carly, too. <laughs> it makes no sense. Nobody's gotten mad at Carly at all for this. Everybody's jumping on Nina for being the one to snitch on Carly that committed the crime. <laughs> like Carly and Drew, they weren't thinking about Scott and um, Scott, Scout and um, Donna when they were committing the crime. But oh, it's so bad because Nina wanna be petty and tell, you know, tell, you know, snitch on them. Yeah. I was like, I'm a Nina fan, but yeah, I said that that was hella petty for doing it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was still a crime. It's not like she made up the stuff. You know. Yeah. I, I, I about it. This is what looked bad. The only thing that, you know, the only thing that does, that does vex me is that I wish Nina would just sit there and own it. Because she has a she has a right to sit there and come back at Carly because Carly did sit there and lie not about one but two daughters that she had. So my whole thing is like, you know what? Own it. Be like, you know what? I did it out of petting pettiness. And so there's this constant apology tour and kissing ass to Carly be like, Oh, I'm sorry for this, I'm sorry for that. It's like I get that people like Carly says a fan favorite, but it's like since when did Village starts to there and, and start sucking up and constantly apologizing for doing something that you kind of had a right to do. Was it right? No, but emotions are high. And she did, you know, she did sit there and, and did something to you. So I understand payback. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, Nina, just stop apologizing. You don't need to apologize, especially to Carly. No. Don't 
don't apologize to nobody. Be like, yeah, I did it. So what? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was hella pity for me to do it. But, you know, it's over. You know, it happened. Let's just, you know, whatever. You know, just constantly apologizing to Carly. You know, Nina doesn't owe Carly an apology, even for this. So what? You know, Carly has been more wrong to Nina than Nina has been to Carly, you know. <laughs> but everybody, you know, a lot of people are just saying, that Nina, this is all her, blah, blah, blah. No, Carly lied about her daughters. Then Nina did try to tell her about Sunny, but, you know, Carly didn't want to listen. And Sunny put himself in that situation by going after Julian. Yeah. So, of course, nobody remembers that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole that they forget that the whole reason why Nina got the Metro Court was to give it back to Carly, no charge. But Carly didn't want it. But now it looks bad that you know Nina has it. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I, I I love that. People, I was like, people... I wrote that. <laughs> I was like, did I just see something? Something wrong? But I was like, no, that's what happened. Yeah, and Nina didn't steal Sunny. Carly could have had Sonny, but Carly didn't even really want Sonny. She wanted Jason. The only reason why she didn't have Jason because Jason backed off and Sonny came back. Yes. <laughs> that And also, Sonny was trying to make it work with them, but Carly wanted to go talk to Drew because she wasn't sure she wanted to work out things with him. And Sonny got drunk and Nina showed up and it's like, hey, I'll just move on to this blonde. That's how it happened. So Carly could just, you know, and if Carly really wanted Sunny, she could have fought for him. She is Carly. Um, she had the upper hand all those years with Sunny and their kids. You know, she could have won and pushed Nina out, but she didn't. She just let it slide. So all of this is just so stupid, just to make Nina look bad. Yeah, and, then you, <laughs> and, then, and then you stop and you think about that, right? So like Sunny, you know, he wound up something to train Carly. He cheated on Carly. You know, Sonny was like, Carly didn't sit there and jump when he snapped his finger, so he went right to Nina. But yeah, people want to sit there and say, oh, Nina stole Nina stole Sonny. But I'm like, Nina didn't sell, Nina didn't steal Sonny. Sonny <laughs> was a bastard for Smith there cheating on his wife with another woman. So why was Smith there blaming Nina for something that Sonny did? And I'm a Sonny fan, but like what he did was out of pocket on so many levels. That's yeah. my thing. Stop <laughs> Smith trying to make Nina look like, oh, well, she's a man stealer. Like, Sonny didn't have a brain of himself. You know, he yeah. didn't have a brain of his own. Yeah, like she's drugging him or blackmailing him into marrying her. No, Sonny went willingly. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that, I just like, that's what's always it's annoying on soaps. And in real life, too, they always like to blame the other woman. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Sonny's married. He knows what you're supposed to not do when you're married. But, yeah, of course, Nina's got to be the bad guy all around. Yeah, and that's also another reason why I defend Nina. I do that with characters, especially. You know, if everybody's coming down on them, I'm more likely to side with them, the person that's being put down, just because, you know, I don't know, I just want to defend them. <laughs> or if I see them play out, I'm like, you know, it's rightfully for to be defended because the people that usually are bringing down that character done way worse. In my opinion. And Carly, yes, I've seen her do way worse than what Nina has done. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I always sit there and say it like this. I, I put it like this when, where people constantly sit there and dislike one person, hate one person, whatever. That Nina could sit there and save a bus full of children. And yet people will sit there and find some sort of fault in what Nina did. Oh, she didn't talk to them correctly. She didn't sit there and be nice enough. Her tongue wasn't soft enough. And it's like, <laughs> I, I get to a point, and I know that this is going to piss off people. This is 2024, and if I piss mm -hmm. off people, so what? Um, this yeah, I lost a follower. <laughs> I lost yes. a follower off of my um, review last week, last review, um, the last review of last year. I think it was because of my rant over Carly and Lois. <laughs> over, I thought that was funny. <laughs> and I was like... I was like, either they are, didn't like my rant or they're tired of my Nina love. Either way, I thought it was funny. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Well. How was I listening to this? I, I had a thought and then I just kind of lost it. Um, how was this what they're talking about? 
<laughs> you made me forget. Um, in the same oh, room with us. Oh yes, 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 yes. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like I feel like some people, and I'm gonna piss people off. Some people have a certain level of tunnel vision with their favorite character. They love to sit there and see what they want to see and choose to ignore the other stuff that mm -hmm. has been a catalyst or made that character look bad. Really? You know, I'm the first one to call out my faves, definitely. They being stupid. <laughs> I'm like, really? No. And I actually used to like Carly, but over the last few years, they just made her seem like she's a saint. And I'm like, she's not the saint. Like, everybody is liking her. She's making friends with everybody and stuff. Like, you know, a few months ago, you know, Maxie was coming into Kelly's being all nice to her. And I'm like, when did these two be were nice to each other? Like, <laughs> I don't even really remember any, like, scenes with them. Like, okay. And Carly and Liz and Sam, they all, all of them, none of them should be friends. Like some people say that Nina and Ava shouldn't be friends, but okay, so why would Sam and Liz be friends with Carly or even be nice to them? It makes mm -hmm. no sense. That's why I appreciate feuds like Lucy and Tracy. You know, they still don't like each other after all these years. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. You know. Now, Willow, do you think that Willow should forgive um, Nina? Do you think that Willow should forgive Nina? And okay. tell me why. Definitely. That's her mom. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> that's her mommy. And she's warmed up to Nina. I mean, she went there, you know, when her dress ripped, the first thing she thought about was her mommy. Go to her. <laughs> Why? And Michael's just, I'm like, I'm glad that she told off Michael. She's seeing that Michael is just trying to control her life. You know, she's trying to keep Nina out of his out of her life, you know, that's not up to him. That's up for Willow to decide if Nina is there. You know? Mm -hmm. So I was really happy when she told him off. And that cute dress, she just wasted because she didn't really get to do anything in it. Oh, well, she should keep it and then take out her next guy. <laughs> That'd be her, her, day, her date dress for her next guy. <laughs> no, I will sit there and say this. I will sit there and say this. I think she should forgive her on the basis of Harmony was way worse. Harmony exactly. put you in a cult. Harmony sat there and gave you the shower to God knows what. But you want to sit there and you you call Harmony your mom pretty much. The woman that put you in a cult. But Nina makes her mistakes and you're like, oh, well, this is unforgivable. Cult, Nina, are, we, are you kidding me at this point? Yeah, even Carla, that's how she justified not telling... Um, Nina about Willow, you know, saying that she would just smother and stuff. I'm like, Harmony just put Willow through hell her whole life that Willow had to go and change her name and start a whole new life to get away from Harmony. Yeah, okay, so yeah, Nina's a little smothery and stuff, but, you know, way better than putting her in a cult. <sighs> That's just, ugh, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I get I get the okay, I get the whole thing with Michael and controlling and everything like that. That was wrong, that was messed up. I get the time and the space and everything like that. She needs some time or whatever. Cool. But you know, when she said, Oh, you know, Michael, you lied to me, and Michael was like, you know, listen, I did protect you the same way you did to protect me when you didn't tell me about your cancer. People was like, Oh, well, he threw that in her face. He didn't throw I that in her face. Oh, he no. used that as an example of the same thing that she did. <laughs> Well, I'm like, I do feel like she should sit there and forgive both of them because it's not like this was the end of the world. This wasn't the worst mistake either, either of them made. And if she could sit there and walk away from him over that, well, you're not really that loyal. Marriage, death do odds part or whatever. Like, you you that quick. To, that's the problem with society. I'll sit there and say this and then I'll, I'll stop. People are so willing to sit there and give up on their relationships so easy. It's not even funny. Yeah, nobody got patience no more. Yeah. <laughs> no, no patience, especially on soap operas. It's like people just move on, just like fall in love, get married, and next thing you know, oh, it's over. I don't want to be with you no more because you piss me off or do something that's nothing to do with me, like Xander and Sarah. 
Like they're married for two seconds and Sarah's like, I don't want to be married to you because you kidnapped people. Like, oh, girl. <clears throat> but yeah, if, if um I hope that Willow does forgive Nina and then that's gonna piss off Michael. <laughs> Which is gonna be even more funny. But Willow needs to sit down and realize that, you know. Carly and Drew actually committed the crime. Nina only just told in an extremely petty ass way, but still, you know, if she didn't, somebody else could have. You know, you know, Nina wasn't the only one that knew about it. Exactly. And that's the thing. You know, my only thing for Nina fans, some people need to stop just saying that Nina didn't do anything wrong. Like, she didn't do anything wrong by calling the SEC. She did something wrong. And honestly, mm-hmm. to tell you the truth, it's way worse that, one, she was petty, right? Yeah. Two, you married to a mob boss. How do you think Sonny looks in that world when you got your wife that's sn- there snitching like there's no tomorrow? People want, you know, <laughs> when Jason, Jason and Carly was going to get married, the mob's out there like, yo, we can't trust her. If you can't trust Carly, then you damn sure can't trust Nina. That's that's the problem that Sonny in itself, that's some entirely different from, from Carly. That's just your crime lord, and you got your wife's not there talking to the feds. How'd that look? Yeah, true. I'm like, Carly never went to the feds, but I mean, she did snitch on stuff that people have done, but you know, nothing to like put them away or anything. So, yeah, that does look bad on Nina. But, you know, she never snitched on Charlotte or Valentine. So she has that. So there is hope for her. <laughs> but that's very true. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question. Are you excited for Jason to come back? Yes. I hope yeah. he steals Carly from Drew. <laughs> Jason, he, he don't really have to do much to get Carly away from Drew. All he got to do is show up and tell Carly that he wants her. And Carly will run. She, he probably don't even have to say anything. Just show up. And she'll be like, oh, Jason. And just take him in. Yeah, and Drew's going to be go. I hope he goes off somewhere else. Because I'm tired of his ass, too. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Getting in Nina's face. T- basically telling him, basically telling her that he can't whip her ass because she has a vagina. That's basically what he <laughs> said to her. Yep. That's basically. And then he's going to get mad at Sam. For telling Scott she doesn't have to go to a school that he decided to enroll her in without discussing it with Sam first or Scout. Yeah. Dude, you haven't even been in Scout's life in, what, three years? You were locked away for two, and then you come back and you just fall in love with Carly. You're just there for Carly all the time, and you go to prison for her. And the whole, as they forget, the whole reason why Drew got his ass whooped was because he was trying to figure out who Austin was visiting, and that Carly and Sonny asked him to do that. If he just left Cyrus alone, or if he would have let Cyrus die, he wouldn't have had this problem at all. So that's not Nina's fault. Yes, and you, you're, you're, you're exactly right. You're, I, I mean, granted, I said the same thing. You're exactly right. I didn't even have to sit there and say it. You literally said it for me, which is the truth. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for Jason to come back. Um, I'm very curious to sit there and say, you know, my whole thing when Jason comes back, and if he wants to then be Sonny's, you know, mobster, Dex is going to get the Xander treatment. You remember Xander a while back, right? You remember Xander? Uh, I think it came in, like, near the end of him being on the show. So I vaguely remember yes. him. When Jason came back, Xander was put second in command. And Xander didn't like that, you know? And that's the same thing that's going to wind up happening with Dex. Jason comes back. He's going to be number two, which is, you know, what number two is, you know, not to sit there and use potty humor, but it's like, that's literally what you're going to be. So I'm very curious about that. Well, he could very be curious. number four. Brick could be number three. <laughs> <laughs> Brick. Or Dex can just go to hell because he was trying to send Sonny to prison. So I can't Jason, wait might, for that to Jason might just be getting rid of Dex at this point. <laughs> Oof. Ooh, okay. Dex is not needed. Jason is back, and Dex is just, uh, you know, Joss is more on trying to help uh, um, Adam than she is trying to get with Dex, and he was all upset. He had to sit there and babysit Adam instead of getting some. 
<laughs> you could tell that look on his face. He was like, Hello. Happy New Year, me. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, with Jason coming back, then you got to sit there and ask the question. Should Jax come back? Should Ingo Rodemaker come back? And now we're going to get into some controversial stuff. No worry. <laughs> like, <clears throat> I don't know if Jax would want to hire somebody that tried to sue them. I wouldn't blame them if they didn't want to. But I don't really see anything for Jax, really. Um. I don't see what Jax could possibly do on the show. Joss doesn't have a storyline. They're not putting um, Jax and Carly back together. Unless he's coming back to be a villain somehow. Because the show could use some more villains. They only got Cyrus and Esme. Yeah. See, my whole thing is, I, I feel like I feel like Josh could come back because Adam is going crazy. He may be something that's stalking Josh. Between that, Bobby's, you know, Bobby's passing and everything like that. I can see if they did it right. I can see some really good father and daughter moments between those two. So I do see a possibility of, you know, I do see I do see potential in the storyline with them, but the suing mm -hmm. didn't help. Just like the suing didn't help money. Um, but I feel like his case is a little bit different though. It's a little bit more complex than that. You know, did you, did you, I don't know if you saw, he, <clears throat> he wanted doing a three minute video on Instagram. Did you see that video? I don't know. I had to unfollow him. I think I might even blocked him because of oh, all the stuff he was saying. <laughs> I was like, I mean, no, he's entitled to his own um, whatever he wanted to say, but some of it was just a little too much for me. And I was like, I just need a break from him. And I don't think I ever um, um, blocked him or anything. Plus, I'm not really on Instagram that often enough to see what anybody's posting. Because every time I go there, there's always somebody half naked or doing some stupid dance. So, I'm like, hey, that's, not, that's what I'm there for. Yeah. That's what I'm there for. <laughs> there for titties. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what. And that's so, absolutely. I honestly, I can't even I can't even open my my Instagram in front of other people because that's just going to be it. But that's all. Me. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind having him coming back, but I mean. I don't know, cause Jocelyn, she's actually like, um, she's like Sam. She's very ungrateful child, uh, um, betrayer of her father. There's another word I was looking for, but like I always said, Josh should have never liked Sonny in the first place, cause of his feud with Jax. You know, Sonny, you know, had Jax deported, so she missed out. Like he was gone for like a year or two. Of her life where her dad was not here because of Sonny. Does she not know that? And that her mommy cheated on Sonny with daddy, and that's the whole reason why it happened. So mommy can cheat, but Sonny can't cheat. Hmm. Yeah, I can I can I can totally see that. You know, and I I under I understood her anger back then with the whole Sonny and stuff like that, because you're right. You know, Sonny did some spiteful edge, and I understood the level of anger that wound up happening. And I understand why she is upset to some extent because, you know, she's choosing her mom's side, you know, as far as Sonny hurting her mom. But my whole thing is like, bro, Sonny was smith there having that blood money for years and you were totally fine with that. And mm -hmm. two, she quote unquote hurt your mommy. Then you want to sit there and start talking this, that, and the third. Oh, well, Sonny's a criminal and this, that, and the It's just like, bro, you were fine with it then. You need to sit there and shut your mouth now. Yeah, like... Yeah. Uh, more if if she wanted to be okay with Sunny before okay, but then at the Morgan died, that's when she should have been like, "Oh, I don't like you. My brother is dead because of you." Or when Sunny killed AJ, uh, and find out AJ didn't even do nothing. You killed the innocent man. <laughs> yeah. Did she not know that Sunny murdered somebody for abs murdered first of all murdered, and then second of all murdered for no no reason at all. Oh, uh, but you know that uh, Sonny sticking his pee pee in somebody else. That that's what sealed the deal of not wanting to like him anymore. Really? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, like, I can understand yeah. those instances where she turns on Sunny, but this one, that's when I was like, that's so stupid. Especially when she was just telling Carly and Jason how much she loves that they were finally getting to be together. <laughs> I wish that somebody would have told Sunny how everybody in town was so happy for Carly and Jason to get married. So he could have saw that, but no, I couldn't do that. I'm still mad that he didn't walk on walk in on Jason and Carly banging. Oh my god, that would have been so good. Yes, that would have been so <sighs> sick. Yeah, that would have been 90s classic oh. school walking in and being like, oh my god, I'm so angry. Let me find my piece. Like okay. that would have been that would have been great. That would have been classic so exactly. No, missed opportunity. That would have brought up the ratings for sure. That's some good juicy drama. <laughs> Okay, but I, I see what you're saying, why you don't think that, you know, Jackson would be back. And some of the stuff he said, see, my whole thing is like, some of the stuff he could sit thin sick and be out of pocket, but it's the same thing with Nancy, though. It's okay, but it's, but it's okay when Nancy sits thin sick, but it's not okay when Jack sits thin when when Engel says stuff. That's my, that's my, that's my point. You know, keep that same energy for, for Nancy that you would be. For Engel, because Engel was like, you didn't find me because of the man, and you fired me because I said stuff that the company didn't like. So what is his time? He's not saying anything outrageous. Now, some people may not agree with him, but Nancy also says things outrageous. She, she, she doesn't have a problem being on the show, so keep that same energy. Keep the same energy. Yeah, Nancy don't care what she says. <laughs> but I wasn't seeing I didn't when I was on Twitter, I didn't see a lot of the stuff that she was actually saying. I was seeing more people reacting to what she's saying. The Ingle stuff I saw because people kept retweeting what he said. That's what I saw. But I was like, and this is if he wants to say this, and that's his business. I just I just didn't want to hear it. <laughs> exactly. like, you can say whatever you want to, but it doesn't mean I want to hear it. You know, it's whatever. Yes. But I mean, I don't blame him for not wanting to get the vaccine. I regret doing it, but you know that was his own personal thing. But you know, I think that just making a big deal about it just was I don't know because I just made it bad. Like, yeah, you might not be able to come at the show, but you know, other people looking at you too. Like, you know, this is the day and age where you have to be careful what you say. You know. If you're on, if you're a celebrity or you're on social media, because you're gonna lose your job. Yeah, like I just saw a story where this um, teacher lost her job because she posted a video on TikTok about complaining to had she she had to stay back from a um, field trip because a special needs student couldn't go, and she was complaining about it on TikTok and she showed the child from behind and stuff. I'm like, really. Let's say that's, that's my whole thing, though. Let me, no, let me ask you that question, though. So you say that, you know, he should have to be careful for what he says, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you've been doing social media for about a good hot minute, right? Yeah. How would you, how, okay, so how would you feel if you had to sit there and have to sink the same restrictions on what you could and you couldn't say? Would you like that? No. Okay. No, I'm not saying that you should like it either. It's just... You know, you just you have to realize that some people are just extremely sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get that. I get that. But like I said, you know, I wouldn't like it and you wouldn't like it as far as how we move and what we say and what we can't say. Mm -hmm. And that's where the whole freedom of speech comes in from. So it's like, you know, I'm not going to sit there and chastise him because he says stuff that people didn't like. And the company was like, oh, well, you're not sitting there saying the right type of stuff, so we're gonna sit there and fire you. Cause that could that could that could be the same thing said for me and you. So yeah. I, you know, that's why I say always keep that same energy. Always keep that same energy. Yeah, that's why I don't talk about politics. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I stay away from that stuff. I really honestly I don't really understand politics. I'm like, I hear something, it's like, oh, we're gonna pass this law or something. I'm like, that sounds like it could be a good idea. Then the other side that don't like it, they'll um, talk about how it doesn't sound right. And I'm like, okay, that makes a good point. And then vice versa. And then I'm like, oh, Lordy, I don't understand. And then they focus on the wrong stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to listen to this stuff no more. <laughs> yeah, but and that's, and that's the thing, though. Like, politics, but also, also, also color, also race. It's something I don't intend to talk about either because it's very... 
it's it's a very sensitive subject. No matter what you say, somebody's going to be offended. So I stay. I, I generally try to stay to some extent uh, away from race and politics. But um, you saw my video on the Taraji um, PH video, right? Or is it yeah. PH? And it was actually worse on TikTok. I became like number one <laughs> on TikTok, which I'm totally fine with, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, and this, uh, she should just, you know, don't complain about not making that money. Go out and find other ways to make that money. Well, yeah. That's the thing that she has. And I, I sat there and I rewatched the video again. So I may do a part two on that. It's a very complicated situation because I do understand where she's coming from. There, yeah. are, the, there are a lot of people of color that don't get the same pay as our counterparts. And that is a problem. And I do understand that. But my only thing... Before I move on, it's like when Monique was hesitant that they're having that problem, where was she at? Where was, she, where was that support at? No, because she was smith there playing cookies, she was getting her money. So yeah. Monique was doing the same thing, has the same problems that now you're having. But you weren't there for her. So anyway, let's let's get back to this. So so days of our lives. <laughs> days of our lives. What what are your thoughts? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Last week, that was torture to watch. Like, seriously, that whole week, everything. Whew, I'm going to need something stronger to get through this drug storyline. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's just everything is just so, it's just so stupid. EJ just coming in and automatically want to send Tate to prison with some old dudes when he knows that Stefan and Ava are running the drugs for Cyrus. And he doesn't want to help Clyde. Stefan and Ava. You mean Clyde. Huh? You mean Clyde. Clyde, not, not Cyrus oh. Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, all these soap operas. Clyde. <clears throat> Okay, Stefan and Ava are running the drugs for Clyde. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And so EJ knows that, but he's still going to hurt Tate for no reason. And if he really wants to get back on all three of them, he could have just gave Rafe a tip saying, hey, you know, they're running the drugs. And, or, you know, I know what's going on at the dock. So then Rafe and everybody can go down there and arrest them. He could have did it that way. So then if Holly did OD, Nicole would have known that EJ did try to help and stop it. But now it just looks bad for him for knowing about it and not doing anything. And then, you know, now being mean to Tate for no reason. So that all looks stupid. And then it looks stupid on Brady, too. He calls himself trying to help, but then he, you know, says the drugs are his. But they're not Tate's drugs either. So he just like pushed Tate into having to confess that they were his. So I'm like, yeah. What? Well, I see that Brady's keeping up the trend of being an idiot into 2024. I, I, you know, to some extent, I will sit there and give them, I don't want to sit there and say a pass, but I do understand the initial impulse to protect your children. I do get that, which is why he practically threw himself under the bus because he felt like EJ was gonna was gonna get somebody. He was like, he's gonna sit there and get Tate. So he's like, I'm not gonna take the blame for something that my son probably could have did and just have him come after me. Rape made sense, but you know that's 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 the thing. There's he, when you're a parent, it's your your instincts is a little bit different than what logic system tells you to do. So yeah. to some extent, I can give him. A bit of a pass on that. Yeah, true. And there was like a lot was going on at the moment. So when a lot of energy like that going on, you don't really think that logically. But, you know, after the fact, it does look pretty bad for Tate and Brady, too. <laughs> but it's just so, oh, it's just so stupid. And all of this going on, EJ never even went in and talked to Nicole and be by her side talking about how much he loves Nicole and Holly, but he never actually went in there. He just saw that Eric was there and then backed off. I mean, I can understand not wanting to start anything with Eric, but, you know, still it could have went in there nicely 
and just been right there with Nicole. Eric might have just nicely exited. But no, he's just too busy being an asshole. Yeah, you know, my whole thing is I was to then say before we move on. Anything that happens to Tate, mm -hmm. that's on EJ. And I mean any I'm not gonna sit there and get into you know that exactly what I'm talking about, what goes on in jail sometimes with a younger person. Okay. If that happens, that's on EJ. And they are making him so insufferable and so unlikable that it's like he's my favorite character. I'm like, bro, you're so out of pocket, I don't even know where to begin. Um, what about Leon Sloan? What about Leon Sloan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this week was so horrible. I couldn't even enjoy their scenes. I know I love me some Leo, but no, this is still stupid. Like this whole baby storyline just gets stupider and stupider. It's just like, you know, I overthink everything. So <laughs> I'm still like, you know, there's no reason for Salone to have started this anyways. And then Leo's just taking money for Salone. And I'm just thinking, you know, why don't you use this money or whatever you're trying to get for Salone to try to get Dimitri out of jail. If you love Dimitri so much. Like Stefan, he should be trying to figure out who really killed Leo and get Gabby out of prison then trying to protect her while she's in prison. Yes. <coughs> it doesn't make sense. I mean, I know Camilla's gone, but still. You still could yeah. find a way to get her out of prison and then find a way to write her off or whatever. Send her to go see Ariana, or they could recast her. You know, same thing with Dimitri. Well, the actor that plays Dimitri would love to come back. You know, he was talking about how much he loves being on the show. So they could still bring him back and they could just start the storyline with him coming back. You know, <sighs> but no, or they could just have him just like break out of prison. Everybody else breaks out of prison in the hospital while they're <laughs> locked up. <laughs> Um, handcuffed to bed, but they can still get out with all the cops being around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's definitely out of pocket. I, I will sit there and say that. First of all, I'm like, Leo didn't actually even blackmail her until like weeks later on. And then when he does, he's doing things that's so absurd, like charging her account, you know, charging her car to the point where she, you know, is, is getting, um, what, what do they call that? Like overcharging her cards and stuff like that. And it's like, there's no actual purpose to what you're doing. You're just spending money just to spend money. Like, and my whole thing with Sloan is, boo, old Sloan would have been put a stop to that a long time ago, or at least tried. This version is so desperate to keep a semi bum in her life that she's going <laughs> to sit there and, and get the cross maxed out. Like, what are you doing, boo? You should have been found a way to sit there. You came to town. You want to sit there and get revenge on Sloan, on, on Chanel and Paulina. But now somebody's not there doing this to you. You just, oh, I'm going to give you an allowance each month. An allowance? What the? <laughs> oh, my God. They this is so me. dumb. They ruined her character so bad. Oh, Lord. Yes. She came in like a real badass. And then now she's just this pathetic, another pathetic woman trying to hold on to a man that's in love yes. with another woman. Not only that, but he's, Eric is hella pathetic anyway. He's just a pathetic character. I only semi care about him because Greg Vaughn's playing him. But if it was somebody else, I really wouldn't care about him. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, all this to have a baby, and she doesn't even want a baby. She just wants to hold exactly. on to Eric. If she wants Eric to have a baby, she could have just told him that, you know, he is Nicole's baby daddy. Yes. Yep, you're 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 exactly right. Um and you know, again, it's it's very hard for me to feel bad for her because she doesn't seem like she has those touching moments with that child, you know? It's more like, oh, I'm doing this for Eric. There's no love. There's no anything like she really wants to keep this child. She just wants the child to keep Eric. And that's just a bad look. Mm -hmm. Like leaving the baby in the middle of the square. Anybody exactly. With, like, what anybody the? with half a cent would know that's stupid. It just shows how much she doesn't really care about this baby at all. It's just there. Yes. Yeah, I know. I, I, I agree. I agree with that. Um, Wendy left. Are, are, are you going to miss Wendy? Not really. 
Exactly. <laughs> I loved her in the beginning, but then it just went downhill once her and Trip got together. Or even when she was playing um, Trip and Johnny, it was like, uh, no, I'm ready for this to end and for my Janelle to get back together. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun with her and Johnny trying to figure out what Rolf was doing and stuff and going after yes. him. That was fun stuff. But then after that, it was just like, why are you here? <clears throat> and now yes. he's dead. So I might as well just go away for a little while. Maybe she will come back later in the storyline. But, you know, she's one of those characters that, you know, I could use a good break from. And Tripp should have went with her, too, but he wants to stick around with his mommy, Lordy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. And and now and now we're going to get to the Ava and Stefan part, because here's, here's what bothers me, and I said this a while ago. So, Ava, you can sit there and get your people to take the bad pills off the streets. <laughs> you, can't use those, you can't use those same connections to sit there and try to find a way to, at the very least, protect Tripp. You have mob connections. Yeah. You could use them a long time ago, but you're only using them for a cleanup job. Make That's it what make I said. Sense. And I was like, you can't use these people to go take out Clyde. Really? Clyde. Clyde. You know, if they're able to do all that, I'm sure they're able to get somebody. I know somebody has to know somebody in that prison. They could have stabbed him in the shower or beat his ass in the shower. <laughs> like Jew. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. You know, she's Ava Vitali. She used to own that town for a month. And Stefan Damara, these two should not be so worried and scared of Clyde Weston. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> yes. Yes. It's stupid. And if Stefan really wants some help, yeah, EJ's an idiot now. He could have went to Chad. Chad did try to kill Clyde for killing Abby. So go to Chad. And Chad even was trying to figure out what was going on with Stefan and even asked Stefan when he got drunk that day and he mentioned Clyde. Chad was trying to figure out, you know, what's going on? Why did you mention Clyde? You know, why didn't Stefan go to Chad? I mean, Chad's one of the not very demary people, but, you know, he's acting a little more demary lately. I'm sure he could have came up with something. I mean, yeah. Lucas is in there. They can go to him. I think somebody is going to go to Lucas about something. Oh, you said promos, right? <clears throat> uh uh. I stay away from promos. Could it be telling me too much? Oh, okay. <clears throat> but I think somebody goes and visits him because I saw that in the um, the um, Day of Days promo. Okay, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, okay, back I got in November. You. I know somebody, I think Chad is the one that goes to him. So I guess maybe Chad does find out about what Clyde is up to. Maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Chad, don't like, yeah, Chad don't like Gabby either, but he hates Clyde way more. So I'm sure he would help Stefan and Ava. But <clears throat> anything to end this stupid storyline and move on to something more interesting. Because yeah. I'm not feeling, I'm not really feeling any of these storylines very much right now. Because honestly, I don't know what else is going on. <laughs> There's no focus on the baby storyline and the drug storyline. It's like, oh, and um, Xander being Victor's son. That that storyline needs to end too. Because Constance <laughs> can get on my nerves. Teresa too. Alex too. All three of them can go. I'm hmm. done. With, I'm done with all three of them. They can go away. <laughs> yes, I, I I agree with that. No, I do. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I I don't even. And then yeah, you, you pretty much kind of you pretty much kind of just said it. Now just just to kind of well, uh, another question though: Did you actually watch the 60th anniversary daytime special that they did on ABC? Oh yeah, I was watching that this morning. I didn't even know about it until somebody was talking about it, and I was like, I saw nope preview or nothing about this. I mean, granted, I don't watch Journal Hospital Live, but, you know, I do watch it on Hulu and they didn't say nothing. <laughs> well, what you thought of it? <clears throat> I thought it was cool watching the um, some old scenes and stuff. I thought the bloopers were hilarious. There was a yes. lot of Shawty Baldwin <laughs> bloopers in there. But I thought it was funny when Michael split his um, pants. <laughs> yes. I was laughing too hard at that. <laughs> the bloopers are definitely the, the best part. 
Um, I mean, did you did you think that it, it do you think that it, it was rushed? Do you think that they should have put like two hours into it? Because it's the 60th anniversary instead of just giving them an hour. It's almost like the network was just like, well, here you go. This is what you're going to get. So just work with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed rush. Also, it's like almost a year late. Because <laughs> last year was the 60th anniversary. One and two. Yeah, they could have found, brought back some more people and done more flashbacks and stuff. You know, it seems like they were missing a lot of people. You know, they could have gotten one of the luckies to come back. Uh, could have brought back Rick. Um, trying to think of other people. I'm trying to think of who's still alive. Lord, everybody's dead now. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. They could have brought back some more people. Yeah, they could have talked about more stuff, too. You know, they could have talked about Tyler, Christopher, you know, Tyler, Christopher and everything that went up happening. They could have talked about, you know, the actor that played Drew. They could have talked about that, too. But they they, they really didn't. And I remember they, they showed like a, a little highlight clip towards the end of an episode. And that was all they gave them. You know, the actor already, you gotta remember, the actor already got shafted when Steve came back and then they had to sit there and bump him to another, to another character. But then the 60th anniversary, you don't even sit, the only thing you sit there and do is a 30 second clip. Like, really? I, I just, I, I find that to be so insulting, but it just, it made sense to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could have, um, it could have highlighted, you know, all the people that passed, especially since so many passed in the last year. They did, Bobby, and I understood <laughs> that. They, there was other people that they could have sat there and mentioned, and that they they did. Yeah, they mentioned um, Stuart um, Damon for like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, they could have had. Um, they didn't talk about the actor that plays Edward. Aren't both of them? Didn't both of them pass? Yeah, Jed Allen and I forgot the other guy's name. Yes, they they, they did. Um, I mean, they showed Tracy, which was nice, but it's like, you know, they, they didn't sit there. So I remember I remember Edward's last scene where he gave the um the cure to Emma. You know, he decided not to take it away. Remember the, the water package in the store? They didn't even talk about that. They didn't talk about his passing or anything like that. This is exactly why people were so disappointed because it felt so rushed. In mm -hmm. our episode, when you really think about it, it's 43 minutes. Yeah. Why even do it at all if, if that's what you're going to sit there mm -hmm. and put into it? But the net, it's like the network showed you just how little that they actually cared about General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And also, I just thought the villains, General Hospital has like some of the best villains I've ever seen on soap operas. They could have did, they could have talked about that for a good few minutes. Yeah. I like all the all those people, especially since they you know dedicated so many years to the mob, especially all the mobsters. They didn't do yes. that. Yeah, they they, they it, it was it was definitely a missed opportunity. But again, it's like the network was like, we don't care about the soap opera that much. We got to sit there and pretend that it does because it does give us some money. So here's a forty-two minute special. Just work with. It. That's, you know, and it's funny too. I would sit there and say for me, one, this is something that James said. You know, James like the networks don't care about your soap operas. They don't. They're just there, but they don't. They don't care if they if they found another way to sit there and make money like they did with Days. They're gonna do that in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they also didn't really focus on the Cassidines. I mean, they showed Helena for a little bit, but you know, what about the other ones? Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Um, Elizabeth Taylor, I think she might have been a cast nine. Um, the actress, you know, actress that it, that um, she made a curse on on Luke and, and Laura. Mm -hmm. Remember that scene? I she thought was, that was like a, she was the first. She was the first Helena. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Um, have you been watching B and B lately? Oh yeah. Okay. What do you think about Xander coming back? <laughs> I think it's added some intrigue about um, to the show, definitely, because something I'm like, 
had me really thinking, did Thomas really kill that girl or not? <laughs> I'm like, hmm, keep going back and forth. I was like, oh, something from the past. That's really cool. Plus, it's also a different direction to the show. You know, it's all been, most of the stuff I've been seeing from the show is, you know, who's with who, triangles and fashion and stuff. And I'm like, murder? Hmm. Yeah. So, but I was like, this is interesting. But then at the same time, I'm like, oh, this is probably going to ruin Thomas and Hope. So I'm like, ugh. It's like, which one do I like? But anyways, they already have it planned out. So it's not my choice. <laughs> now, what do you, but, what do you um, think of, what do you think of Finn coming at, what do you think of Finn coming at Thomas about Hope? That was just like, what is going on? I mean, I can understand his worrying, but. He was acting like her daddy. I was like, "You are not Deacon." <laughs> you're, you're also not. You're also, you're, you're, you're married to a brunette. You're not married to a blonde. You're sitting there acting like Hope is your, is your wife. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's so out of pocket. Well, you're never going to sit in a relationship as long as I, as, as long as I have breath in my body. Right, what? That, that's just taking it to the extreme. <laughs> Especially what Steffi said to let it go. Your wife always said to let it go, and you're still pushing it. And you're just asking for trouble. Especially yeah. that's her brother too. It don't matter what he do, that's still gonna be her brother. She's still gonna stand up for him. Exactly. That that will always that will always be her brother, but Finn may not always be her husband. Mm -hmm. And that's something that people need, you know, just even in in reality, you know, you need to sit there and understand your role in your relationship with your husband or your wife because they're always gonna be family members. You may not always be their wife or their husband. So keep that in mind next time you decide to smart mouth somebody or you know things of that nature because it, it can backfire mm -hmm. and she already went through all of this with his crazy mama <laughs> how you know she's already dealt with that and it's cool with everything and then you want to start this no don't start trouble no and thomas you know he got that look like you know you keep doing what you're gonna do and you're gonna find out <laughs> exactly the game is after gonna find out <laughs> up around and find out now do you do you think that hope is being irresponsible with thomas and his feelings or mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that um well yeah she is using him as a sex toy yep. <laughs> i believe that she really does care and love him in a way but not like he loves her and um but she is being honest with him you know she said she didn't say yes to the engagement just to keep him around. She said that she needs time to think it over, you know. But, um, yeah, at the same time, it's like, I believe that she does care about him. But, you know, she definitely looks like she's stirring up some stuff <laughs> with him looking like he is now because he's been obsessed with her. So it's just like one of those things that. You shouldn't start stuff you can't finish. Yeah. <laughs> and they, but it makes for great story. A great yes, story. Absolutely. And, and they're hot together. Her and Liam know. Which is good because, you know, he hasn't been on. So that's whew, thankful. I mean, well, you know, he did he did come on he did come on this week when he was sent to talking to um Dollar Bill about his date with um with Poppy. Which what do you what do you do you what do you think about the story with Poppy, um, Dollar Bill, and Luna? Yeah, I think that Bill is Luna's dad. I thought that the first time he went to Pop in, it's like, you look familiar. But then, you know, the more they show it and the more Luna talks about she doesn't know her daddy, the more I'm like, watch them twisted and somebody else be the daddy. <laughs> Just because. Because they're making it so obvious that that's where they're going. But um, <clears throat> I thought there was some cute chemistry there. They're all smiling at each other and stuff. And the way Bill was talking about it, it felt like I was there with them at that concert. <laughs> but, you know, Bill is a, a smooth talker. I remember last year how he's talking to Brooke about how much he wanted her back. And then he went and did the same thing with Katie. <laughs> yeah. And he just, like, totally dropped that. They just forgot all about that storyline. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Not complaining. Well, actually, I wanted him to steal Katie from Carter because I was still mad at Carter for what he said about um, Quinn. But, yeah, I guess I'm over that. 
But still. But I like Poppy and um, Dollar Bill. I think that would be cute together. Definitely. Even though I really wanted Bill and Lee together. But, you know, that could be something. The sisters could fight over Bill. That's a storyline I would like. Haven't seen that in a while. Um, sisters fighting over a dude. And classic soap. Um, now, just sliding back to General Hospital again with, with Olivia and Lois. Do you think that it was Lois's place to tell Sonny about the truth? Or do you think that Olivia was just being out of pocket for having people blame her husband for something that she that he didn't do in order to keep the quote unquote peace. <laughs> Lois should not have been involved at all. She should have encouraged Olivia or somebody else to come forward to talk about it, to tell Sunny. But yeah, it is stupid of Liv to want her husband to be blamed for something he didn't do. Especially, well, she at the beginning she thought that he really did do it. Exactly. So I guess you know, in a way, why would it matter? But then she came around, so. But yeah, I don't like that Lois was involved at it in all. She's really annoying, loud, just starting stuff basically. Because after the truth came out, you know, she went to go see him Friday. You know, it sounded like she was just, like, instigating. Like, she was hoping that Sunny would be pushed into doing something to Nina or somebody else. You know, I mean, he already beat up Cyrus, right, Cyrus. But, you know, still, you know, it's like, what? And if she was a real friend of Sunny, then she would know that Sunny has changed. She doesn't do the drinking and throwing barware and stuff. You know, so she's obviously not that close with them anymore. And since she's been back, she's only had one scene with them before she was all in his face telling um, his family's business. Now, but, you, know. you, you sure it's Sunny? You sure it's sure Cyrus and it's not Clyde? Yeah. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I had to think for a second, but now you made me think again. So I had it right. It, it, it could be Clyde. I mean, you know. You're saying they both wrong, but um, Cyrus has seen the light and has um, found Jesus. Clyde has not. Now I do, I I do, <laughs> I do like the fact that Lo that Lois told Sonny the truth because my whole thing is Olivia and Lois have grew up with Sonny. They should want the best for him, right? So my whole thing is, why would you want him to be with such a lying and deceitful woman like Nina in some ways of doing something that's going to make him look bad in his line of work. You know, Olivia knew that. It was like, oh, well, Sonny's happy. But it's like, would he be happy knowing the truth about who Nina is? But you didn't say anything. You didn't You didn't say anything. Lois says something. In a lot of ways, I feel like Lois is more of a true friend. We're like, hey, listen, your girl's out of pocket. Let me tell you what she did. Maybe if she did it came about it in a different way, but the way that well, she came yeah. out about it is like, no. Well, well what what other way was what other way she had what other way should she have came about it though? I don't know. Just the way that she came about it was all loud and stuff, especially with Olivia. It was like she could have talked more sense into Olivia to go to him. Or just like not be like, oh your whole family is lying to you. She could have just said that Nina was the one that called, told the SEC. She didn't have to throw it in his face that, yeah, it's Michael and, yeah, it was Michael. What do you think about it? it was, well, Michael and Olivia, that's his family, knew about it. But, you know, she didn't just call out Nina. She called out Michael and Olivia also. Um, I, can, I can see an argument for that. Yeah, I mean, Sonny could have found out later that Michael and Olivia knew, but, you know, she didn't have to throw everybody on the bus when she did. And technically, she didn't throw Nina under the bus. She threw Michael and Olivia under the bus. Michael threw Nina under the bus. Well, I mean, Lois did too, because Lois is like, this, I got to sit there and rewatch it again. No, 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 she did. She did sit there and, didn't she sit there and say, well, it was it was Nina that told, yeah, she did. She sat there and said Nina told on Carly and Drew. So in a way, she did actually throw her on the bus. And she was like, your family knew about it. Uh-uh. 
He didn't. She didn't say that it was Nina, because she just said that his whole family was lying. Oh yes, you're right. You're right. Because Michael is the one that told him it was Nina, because it was Nina right. uh, when she walked um, walked in. So I always thought that was funny, because he's talking about um, Michael knowing who did it, but he never asked him until right before Nina walked in. Yes, that's very true. No, you're correct. You are correct. Um, did you watch any of um, Y and R? You didn't really get to that. No, but I said I'm gonna watch it more this year. Okay. Yeah, I was watching the New Year's. Uh, I guess it's their New Year's episode or the last episode from last year. I was gonna just watch um, the this past week's episodes, but then I saw that. Um, Kevin and Gloria were on that Friday, so I want to watch that. Yeah, because I found out they had. Um, I saw an article about um, Sharon Case. They did a special Sharon episode. I guess it aired yeah, Friday. Sure. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I would love to watch a whole episode about Sharon. Of course. Did you watch it? Not yet. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it when this when this is over. Sorry, Rocky is wants so much attention today. I don't know what his issue is. You want a puppy? No, I'm good. <laughs> no, but it was. I mean, it was. It was a good. It was a good episode. But I feel like, like I feel like longer fans would appreciate it more than me because I just started watching this, and other people have been watching it longer. So I feel like the the people who've been watching it longer are going to really appreciate it. I don't want to spoil it for you, so watch it, and then we'll maybe we'll sit there and talk about it another time. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, I started watching in 03, I think. Damn. Yeah, but I've been a very unloyal fan. <laughs> like, I stopped watching it for years and years and then just came back and watched it for a little bit and stopped watching it again. I'm like, I took breaks from Days and GH, too, but I don't think I took that long with breaks, maybe like a year, eight months or something like that, but yeah. Y and R, I took like a few years in between coming back and stuff. So, don't they piss me off? <laughs> <laughs> no, Sharon and Nick, and then the, I didn't like the writing they were doing with um, Sharon. And then I never liked Kane and Lily. I liked Lily and Daniel. And oh, you you gonna be pissed? You you gonna be pissed? Um, oh yeah, I, I found so that I was okay. um, yeah, I was in um, Carice's live on Friday night and found out that Daniel kissed his baby mama. He was in whose live stream on Friday night? Carice. Who's Carice? That's not his name? Oh, Carice. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Carice. Kyrie. Yes. I said yes. it wrong. Oops, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. Yeah, you, okay, yes. Yeah, that, that yeah. did happen. Uh, Daniel was a scumbag. His dad is also a scumbag, um, like father, like son. So, yeah. Well, scumbags. Danny, Danny sat there and, and, and kissed back Phyllis the same way that Daniel sat there and kissed back Heather. Like, they started the initial kissing, but then they stopped. And they both sat there and looked at these women and started kissing them like, bro, you, you're you wait, you're a Christina. You're you're with Christine. You're sitting there hanging out. Y'all got something going on. But now, like, I, I just I find it so dumb on, on both levels. Like they're both scumbags, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm coming back for this storyline with um uh, uh Victoria and Cole's daughter. So I saw those scenes where they judged the whole Newman family. I thought that was funny. And I really like Aunt Jordan. She's funny. I heard she's going to come back. So I want to check that out. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I can see her coming back. I feel like, you know, when it comes to a, when it comes to a security and keeping people in jail, lock up or whatever, it's like the plot would just demand that they get out and start causing havoc again. So they'll wind up doing it. Same thing with Sheila. Sheila got out on some BS because they wanted to have Sheila come back. So... Yeah. You did. Yep, and I love my villains. Yeah, I mean, I do too. I just, I need them to be more smarter about how they get out of these situations, you know? But. Yeah. <laughs> I 
depending on the villain, I'll be okay with however it is. But sometimes I do sit back and think, really? Yeah, like all the ways that um, <laughs> Kristen got out of prison on days, a pardon, two, she got two pardons, really? Only to still commit uh, crimes. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. Sometimes as a soap opera fan, you got to sit there <laughs> and have a certain level of disbelief for them to get out of the stuff that they get out of. And it's like, you give them a pass depending on how much value that they bring to the show and how much you like the characters. That's that's the only way I can sit there and justify half of the stuff at times. Yeah, true. And then another times I'm like, why y'all back, back this character in the corner? you know, if you want them to stick around. And cause that's, sometimes I think that the writing goes a little too, too far. And I was like, I understand if it's like a character that's temporary, it's only gonna be around for like this story or something. But like long characters like Kristen and Esme, you know, those characters, you can't push them too, too far, you know, and expect us to want them to come back or, you know, be more realistically come back, you know. Yeah, that's that's the thing with Esme. You know, Esme, I feel like the perfect balance is to have her be still a troublemaker, but not have her be all extreme like she was before. Because then you run into a Sheila, then you run into a Sheila problem where Sheila's just doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And it's like, at some point, is she is she going to sit there and go to jail? Is she going to be caught? I mean, Sheila jumped off of a balcony. No broken bones, no nothing, just walked away like Michael Myers. I'm like, are you kidding me at this point? Like, this is so dumb. <laughs> She's su um, super Sheila. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? I, I I think a perfect blend will be welcoming for Esme, and I can I can get behind that. So, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll sit there and see. Um. Is there anything else that we missed or anything you want to sit there and say before we wrap this up? Yeah. Well, we didn't talk about Esme. <laughs> Esme, yes. Esme, yeah. Esme. <laughs> what do you think of Esme? What do you, what do you think of how, how, how they're going with her? I'm glad that they're done with this as me, as the, not, her, not remembering stuff. Because this storyline, that was just driving me crazy. Like, whole year of that was just so stupid. You know, all that just to have problems for Spencer and Trina, you know, it made no sense to me. So I'm really glad that they finally ended that. And I'm glad that as she's um, not telling anybody that she remembered either. Cause that makes it even interesting. Because I always thought that that was going to happen is that, well, first I thought that she was pretending. And I was like, okay, so she's not pretending. And I was like, well, then she should get her memory back and not remember. I mean, she should get her memory back and then not tell anybody that she remembered and then scheme and do stuff, you know, just to mess with people. I would have been okay if that was the storyline going on, but not that, you know, she doesn't remember and Spencer just wants to be there for his brother that he doesn't even know is really his brother because nobody never thought about doing a DNA test. And now Nicholas is back and he just automatically assumes Ace is his son too, which makes no sense. Y'all know how bad Esme is. So why wouldn't you question DNA? Yeah, yeah, no, you're 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 exactly right. I mean, it's it's. Good no, you know, man. <laughs> you know my whole thing is sneak. She could have sneaked into Spencer's room in the middle of the night. You know, that's not a storyline that hasn't happened before in soaps. Yeah, and then they start retconning stuff like they did with Sean and. What was her name? Um, Jan Spears. No, I, I get that. Um, yeah, what the hell I was going to sit there and say about Esme? See, for every person, because my whole thing is people kept giving me smoke when I was like, Esme doesn't remember who she is. And people were just like, no, she does because she's doing this. She's doing that. And so she's pretending and she's lying and stuff like that. So for every person that gave me smoke when I sat there and said, Esme doesn't remember, guess what? I was right. Yep. And I'm smiling about it because I was right. I just wanted to be petty and just kind of throw that out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did seem that way at first, but then I'm like, no, because we would have gotten a sign that, you know, about it 
eventually. You know, especially when she went to go see Heather, we would have, we would have saw that then, but no. Yep. But, you know, now it's all out. Yeah, exactly. People kept just saying, oh, well, you know, she's an old ass mate. She's lying. She's doing this. She's doing that. But there was never any proof. And people went on their feelings. And, well, they were wrong. <laughs> they were wrong. I'm going to be petty about it. Yeah. And she was pushing Spencer away, not trying to keep them together. Exactly. And he was like, go spend time with Trina. I got my son. That's basically what she was telling him the whole time. But, you know, that's not her. That wouldn't have been what Esme would be doing. Like now, I bet you she's going to try to find a way to get Spencer to exactly. with her and Ace. I'm like, is she already being um, Esme again, not picking up her son from the babysitter. She's just walking around doing whatever. And she's stupid for that glove. Yeah, she knows yeah. she lost the glove, so she should have threw the other glove away and bought some new gloves. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I would have bought a whole uh, different color, different style, all together. <laughs> and I'm like, is she really going to turn herself in? <laughs> well, you know, Laura said to talk about, oh, well, you need to do the right thing and turn yourself in. I was like, uh, no, she doesn't. Tell me what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. you know, especially after all the stuff that her son did, you know, breaking in, that, that's, that's minor. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, you know, with Charlotte, you know, Charlotte's not there. Burn, well, not burning down, you know, the stuff that Charlotte Smith did doing to um, the stuff that Charlotte Smith did doing to Andy, you didn't sit there and tell her, oh, you need to sit there and tell and, and, and you know, tell, tell Charlotte to sit there and confess to the court. You didn't do that. So, okay, don't, yeah, do, don't, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> no don't, don't do that. <laughs> That's true. You know, just like Cyrus was pretty I forgot about this um, scene with Cyrus and War was talking about how Sunny is um she could don't she's friendly with Sunny, but then she'll look at him like he's a bad guy. Exactly. And they both done dirt. Both done dirt. Like Laura Laura has a way of picking and choosing on stuff that she can accept and stuff that she can't accept. You know, Charlotte was literally doing stuff to torture and and harass Anna, but she didn't sit there and say, well I think you need to sit there and tell the court that Valentine. No. So what the hell are you sitting there telling Esme to sit there and turn herself in? It's picking a choose and BS. Nah, you can mess me with that. Yeah, and to me, it looks worse to Laura to befriend Sonny, a known mobster, than having a brother, Cyrus. Yes. You know, you can't pick your family. You can pick your friends. You can't pick your family. Exactly. <laughs> So, and I still don't understand why they've never done a storyline where someone's trying to come and get her job, you know, and throw that stuff kind of stuff in her face and stuff. They don't have anybody doing that except for Cyrus. But then Cyrus is going to look like the bad guy for doing that to Laura. Crazy. Absol absolutely crazy. You know, I sat down with Water. I was like, yo, Laura, you need to sit there and step down. Of course, y'all. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, she, it's, and the thing is, it's not like she won that election fan score. Remember, it was um, Spencer that rigged the election, you know, the whole election thing in the first place. Oh, I forgot about that. Yep. When he was a kid, when they when they had the kid actor, he he rigged the whole thing, and they never went to they never went to sit there and revisit that. Oh lordy, I know something they can bring back. <laughs> yeah, if they remember. <laughs> They probably don't remember. We do. <laughs> oh, they like to rewrite what they write, anyways. So. <laughs> well, very true. Look at John Black and his in his history on days and how he's this and he's that and his father is this person, his father is that person. Now his father is Dick Van Dyke. Like, come on, bro. Like, what are we, what are we doing at this point? They changed his story so many times. Like, he was a Demera for a minute. Like seriously, I'm like, oh lordy, they don't know what they want. It's like every writer has come in and changed the story. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's crazy, crazy. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think we I think we actually covered the ask me stuff. Um, I think that's probably about it, right? Yeah, but I was wondering if Ava's gonna really work with Nicholas. 
to. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very interested. I'm very interested. I like Adam Huss. So I'm, I'm personally glad that he's back. He's so I, oh, I know, I know some people don't like him as as Nick, and they have their favorite person to be Nick, and I get that. I've never been married to one particular actor. I was cool with Marcus, so um, I don't know what they're doing with, with Nicholas. Are they going to find another actor, or is he going to be the permanent Nicholas? Mm -hmm. You know, what's, what's going on with that? He should be the permanent Nicholas. I think so. I think he does well in the role. And he has great chemistry with everybody he's worked with so far. Yeah. And the scenes with Esme were very tolerable compared to his and um between Marcus's and Nicole's. Cause that was just creepy. And I'm glad I hope they never show those scenes ever again. I, I was yeah, very I traumatized them. by them yeah. making ace or making ace, maybe. <laughs> Whatever mm -hmm. that was, it was just no. Well, to tell you the truth, in the reality, if you think that that's bad, it would probably look worse <laughs> because Adam Hutt does actually look older than Marcus. So if, if they did a love scene, if you thought that was bad, it was going to look a lot worse. What's that? And maybe it wouldn't look so bad if they don't go about it the same way. Because the way that it just looked like the two monkeys trying to go at it or something. Like yeah, was, not, that's yeah, not romantic were, or sexy at all. That's just hella creepy stuff. I mean, but yeah, I, they, they was not bad. Yeah, they were just Nicholas, like, better not, Nicholas better not try to tap that again. No, 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 no. <laughs> he better not. But he wants Ava. Or does he want Ava or is he just trying to use Ava? Both. That's my fault. I was like, both. we've done that. I was like, I wouldn't mind them getting back together, but then now that I think about it, this could be his way of trying to use her to take out Esme, and then he'll be done with both of them. <laughs> no, that would definitely, definitely be interesting. I am I'm looking forward to him coming back. Um, I just, I wish they would sit there and decide on what they want to do, because it's like, if they don't have Nicholas, they'll put him in the role. Which is fine, but if I'm gonna sit there, I feel like once I get used to them, that's not gonna be like, okay, we're gonna sit there and get another actor. Then we're just gonna have an issue. So they, they need to figure Adam. out what they're doing. Yeah. They stick with Adam. Don't don't try nobody else. He's working. Yeah. <laughs> I I know that they have a problem with recasting and stuff. I mean, well, we're on our fourth Molly and she's working out fine, but it's like they took too long to get to that to that good one, you know. <laughs> So they, they need, 2024 needs to be different. Yeah. Well, the first one was just supposed to be a 10. And then yeah. I, don't know yes. why they I don't know why they didn't stick with her. But the fourth, the one that's Molly now is definitely the best one. I don't know what they were thinking about with the third one. I'm like, she was too old to play the role, one. And two, she was just, no. That acting, no. It, she just didn't seem right with anybody. It just seemed all the scenes just seemed very awkward. This Molly, she just fits much better with the Davis girls. <clears throat> yeah, they, they they got it right. They took some time, but they got it right. So I just wish for 2024 we we get better stuff. We get better stories because the story's good right now. So if we can if we can move with that moving, you know, moving yeah, I think that'd be great. Um yeah, I'm keep, excited. Keep the energy they got going on now. Yeah. yeah, don't drag out a bunch of storylines again. No, 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 no. Last year was just torture. We'll get to the point of the stories and end them. Finish ending the rest of the storylines. I've been dragging out for a while, and just go with what they got now. The same energy they got, and um, something else I was gonna say, I forgot. Uh, especially in this baby storyline, don't go through with Molly and TJ actually having a baby. I have, I have a feeling that they're going to take this all the way. And then Christina is going to be like on Young and Restless <laughs> with um, um, Devon deciding that he wants to be in that baby's life. I forgot his name. Oh, uh, his name? her, uh, his and Abby's son. Oh, Lord, what is his name? Dominic? Is it Dominic? It is Dominic, yes. 
Yeah, I think that's gonna what's gonna happen. Christina's gonna want that baby, and her um her and TJ are gonna get together or be close together or whatever. And I'm like, oh lordy, because <sighs> it's like the writing's on the wall. Because with Alexis, you know, talking to Christina and Molly, saying, you know, there's nothing that you know to really protect um, this baby from Christina taking the baby. And she already doesn't have faith that Christina would really sign over her baby to Molly and TJ. She was telling Sonny that. <laughs> and then TJ was worried about it altogether, and he went over to talk to Christina, but now he's okay with it. And I'm like... Yeah, yeah. lip service, yeah. It's, it's lip service, because that's the thing. You can sit, she can sit there and give him all the promises that she wants, but the thing is, she can always sit there and change her mind. Mm -hmm. And that's something that they are... Listen, I'm looking forward towards this turn match, okay? I'm looking forward towards it. Molly is having all this faith and confidence and stuff like that instead of actually picking somebody that will probably work out better because she wants her DNA there. And it's it's like, it's going to go sideways and I'm going to be here for it. I'm going to be here for it. I'm with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for the train wreck. It's as long as people know it's going to be a train wreck. That's the thing. I think people are thinking this is going to work out. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. I don't have faith in Christina. I like Christina, but, you know, I don't have faith that she would actually be this kind to Molly. <laughs> it's going to. Um, this. I really don't think that General Hospital needs yet another baby storyline. But, you know, if they can make this juicy then I think I can maybe get behind it. But, you know, I try not to judge a storyline before it gets going, but, you know, I did judge this really early. But I'll let it play out and let, um, let's see how um, juicy it can get. And, you know, Molly could always channel her inner Cassidine and do something to Christina <laughs> if Christina t keeps that baby for real. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, I'm very... Christina could keep the baby. Her and um, Blaze can be the parents and just cut out TJ altogether, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like I said, and you know, I'll take you we, Yeah, I can, I can see that happening. But like with the whole Blaze, with the whole Blaze situation, I feel like that's that's an entire video that we could sit there and talk about. And, and, like I, I already, I already have like questions about that. So we'll. We'll get into we'll get into that part next time. Um, <laughs> I'm very curious about it as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think that's pretty much a wrap. I think that's pretty much a wrap. Um, so, is there anything you want to sit there and say to the subscribers before we sit there in this live stream? Me well, this video. Um. Uh, happy New Year. And uh, thank you for watching. Yes, yes, yes. Um, no, seriously, <laughs> thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming through, Danny Bear. Um, <laughs> like I said, we're we're looking. We we like the energy that GH has given us right now. We hope that it keeps that momentum going into the new year because they they got a lot of awards for for their work. So I'm like, y'all better back that up with that with that moving forward into next year. Um, but yes, I do want to thank everyone for joining. I do thank everyone for watching. I keep forgetting that this isn't live. But thank you, everyone, for watching. <laughs> I appreciate everyone. I appreciate your time, Danny Bear. Um, and we will both see you in the, um, in the next video. Laters. Yeah.